Have mercy on me, O God, for people assail me. They fight me all day long and oppress me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready to glory to the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In Babylon, there lived a man named Joachim, who married a very beautiful and God-fearing woman, Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah. Her pious parents had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich. He had a garden near his house, and the Jews had recourse to him often because he was the most respected of them all. That year, two elders of the people were appointed judges, of whom the Lord said, Wickedness has come out of Babylon, for the elders who were to govern the people as judges. These men, to whom all brought their cases, frequented the house of Joachim. When the people left at noon, Susanna used to enter her husband's garden for a walk. When the old men saw her enter every day for her walk, they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciences, they would not allow their eyes to look to heaven, and did not keep in mind just judgments. One day, while they were waiting for the right moment, she entered the garden as usual with two maids only. She decided to bathe, for the weather was warm. Nobody else was there except the two elders, who had hidden themselves and were watching her. Bring me oil and soap, she said to the maids, and shut the garden doors while I bathe. As soon as the maids had left, the two old men got up and hurried to her. Look, they said, the garden doors are shut and no one can see us. Give in to our desire and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that you dismissed your maids because a young man was here with you. I am completely trapped, Susanna groaned. If I yield, it will be my death. If I refuse, I cannot escape your power. Yet it is better for me to fall into your power without guilt than to sin before the Lord. Then Susanna shrieked, and the old men also shouted at her as one of them ran to open the garden doors. When the people in the house heard the cries from the garden, they rushed in by the side gate to see what had happened to her. At the accusations by the old men, the, sever the servants felt very much ashamed, for never had any such thing been said about Susanna. When the people came to her husband Joachim the next day, the two wicked elder el elders also came, fully determined to put Susanna to death. Before all the people, they all ordered, Send for Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Joachim. When she was, at when she was sent for, she came with her parents, children, and all her relatives, all her relatives and the onlookers were weeping. In the midst of the people, the two elders rose up and laid their hands on her head. Through tears, she looked up to heaven, for she trusted in the Lord wholeheartedly. The elders made this accusation. As we were walking in the garden alone, the woman entered with two girls and shut the door of the garden, dismissing the girls. A young man who was hidden there came and lay with her. When we, in the corner of the garden, saw this crime, we ran toward them. We saw them lying together, but the man we could not hold because he was stronger than we. He opened the doors and ran off. Then we seized her and asked who the young man was, but she refused to tell us. We testify to this. The assembly believed them, since they were elders and judges of the people, and they condemned her to death. But Susanna cried out, O eternal God, you know what is hidden, and you are aware of all things before they came to come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am, about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, 
God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman to, of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel the elder said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, How have you grown evil with age? How you have grown evil with age? Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent and freeing the guilty, allowing the Lord, although the Lord says, the innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you are a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel reported, your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Daniel rep replied, your fine lie has cost you also your head, for the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women, so what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and, asked, and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to st throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, 
neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our readings today, we have, uh, uh, I think as an overarching theme, uh, kind of this uh, response uh, of God in the face of uh, in the face of sin and injustice. In the case of the first reading, that uh, that sin of injustice, that uh, uh, um, that pridefulness and that lust that uh, leads these uh, two judges uh, into condemning Susanna unjustly, and then we have in the gospel uh, this uh, this woman who was caught in adultery, who was in fact sinning, uh, but. Um, but uh, came to the Lord uh, to experience mercy. And so we see kind of the, uh, the, the, the dynamics of, of uh, uh, both uh, justice and, and, and mercy unfolding with, with mercy always, always triumphing, uh, the Lord uh, uh, ultimately extending his mercy and coming to the aid of those who, who are in need. And I think that responsorial psalm, that beautiful Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, um, particularly the, the, the response uh, is, um, is helpful uh, for us. Uh, Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. It was that uh, confidence that the Lord was um, at her side that Susanna was able to cry out in her desperation and the Lord did come to her aid and uh, and freed her, and uh, and so her, her her prayer was was answered uh, through the uh, through the working of this uh, young man uh, Daniel, and even uh, the woman caught in adultery, uh, feeling maybe that she was in such a dark place that she had nowhere to go. The Lord showed Himself that He was at her side. Uh, maybe she wasn't specifically seeking him, uh, but he was there. And, uh, and so I think that's, uh, that's helpful for us in those times when it, whenever we are very aware of our limitedness, when we are aware of being in a dark place, um, we cry out to the Lord asking for his mercy that he be at our side. And in those times, maybe when we're not aware, uh, when we don't have God in our minds, but we find ourselves in that dark place, the Lord comes to us. He is at our side uh, to protect us and to lead us with his mercy and his love. So let's ask God uh, for that grace uh, 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 to persevere in trusting uh, that no matter what dark valley we find ourselves in, uh, through our own fault or uh, through things that uh, happen to us, the Lord is at our side. He is near to us, always desiring to extend his mercy to us, to lift us up, and to remind us that we are his beloved children. Gathered as one, we lift up our prayers to God. For Pope Francis and all clergy, may God's hope shine abundantly through them as they lead the church in the world today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are elected to government positions, may God's justice be in their hearts as they make decisions in the best interests of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who thirst for light in situations of great darkness, may God's love lead them to everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our, for our parish community, may the Lord help us to always grow in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, may God's peace be with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the curtailment of the coronavirus, for all of those who work to help serve those who are suffering, those who are vulnerable, those who are sick, and those who have died, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers in our parish book of intentions, for those we hold in the silence of our hearts, especially at this Mass for the repose of the soul of Isaac Wiedekamp, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we humbly place our prayers before you and ask that you hear and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of daily penance a joyful purity of heart. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed, and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas John our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Has no one condemned you, woman? No one, Lord. Neither shall I condemn you. From now on, sin no more.
Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray, the people who call upon you, that living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.